वेलकम बैक रियली सॉरी इट्स बिन अ लॉन्ग टाइम सिंस द लास्ट वीडियो सो लास्ट मंथ सेप्टेम्बर वॉज रियली बिजी फॉर द स्पेस इंडस्ट्री ए लॉट ऑफ स्टफ एंड न्यूज़ टू कवर सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर एड यू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द स्पेस न्यूज First news: Frank Drake passed away at the age of 92. So, who is Frank Drake? Uh, Frank Drake was a radio astronomer. So, he is also known as the father of SETI. SETI stands for SETI, which stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. He started um, this search of uh, extraterrestrial beings uh, to get a advanced uh, like radio communication from them since the year 1960. From that time, uh, he started this. So. hence he is known as the father of seti he was the first to do that um, he also expressed that in his lifetime um, before he died he will definitely search for an uh, signal from uh, he will get a signal from the uh, advanced beings but um, later in recent years um, he, he he then confessed that uh, uh, this was not possible because um, universe we only have scratched um, a, a tiny tiny part of it so uh, getting something huge like that uh, is still to be seen in the future if it happens so sadly he will not be there to witness that moment so uh, he passed away so i think you guys know uh, drake equation so those who don't know what is drake equation it is nothing but the estimate of number of active communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the milky way galaxy it gives an estimate to us like how many um civilizations can we find um so that answer uh, will be found by uh, using uh, like uh, the formula has some factors in it so namely one is the rate of star formation uh, another the fraction of stars and the planets and those planets uh, which will harbor life so for example if we take earth earth uh, is neither too far nor too close to the sun so it's in between um, uh, what we call and like the habitable zone goldilocks zone if i'm not wrong so that thing um, so taking all those factors into consideration so this formula is uh, the basis so um, any uh, any forums or discussions which happen on extraterrestrial life um, this keep uh, this will keep coming to you so this gives an estimate this is not the like uh, proper uh, uh, like the the proper equation but it it gives a it gives an estimate like if if it's possible or not so frank drake uh, sadly passed away and uh, yeah moving on to the next news second news india to get a new reusable rocket so yeah um the seventh edition of bsx 2022 um it's a space expo which was held in bangalore from 5th to 7th september so here um, is where like uh, the, the chairman of isro said that india is going to get a reusable rocket soon uh, that will be uh, a really good news because um, we have the uh, gslv pslv but uh, it's all it, it all comes down to the reusability factor at the end of the day uh, as we see spacex they fly their rocket like just another sunrise of the day <laughs> every day or maybe in a week you, you it's so common that uh, you know if you hear about the spacex launch you will be like yeah okay they did one more so they 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 are launching it on such a big scale and uh, putting their satellites and and uh, catching their uh, sorry landing their uh, first stage booster back to earth so india is uh, uh, soon going to do that and uh, one more rocket will be added to its list uh, so if this happens and if this works like uh, well and we get good results they can start retiring the other uh, um, rockets this is what um, was said by uh, um, chairman uh, so yes somna so yeah like um, the indians are very cost effective like we are very cost effective and uh, um, 
द प्राइम एग्जाम्पल विच एवरी वन नोज इज द मंगलयान मिशन विच टुक इंडिया ओनली सेवेंटी फोर सेवेंटी फोर मिलियन डॉलर्स एज कम्पेयर टू द नासा मेवन ऑर्बिटर विच कॉस्टेड दम अराउंड लाइक सिक्स सेवेंटी टू मिलियन डॉलर्स सो दिस विल बी ए गेम चेंजिंग वन ऑफकोर्स वी हैव टू सी वन इसरो प्रोड्यूस दैट न्यू रॉकेट एंड Uh, we have to uh, we will have to compare the cost of operating of both the vehicles uh, the spacex and uh, isro because uh, this is very key spacex is doing this from a long time and um, india are still in the stage of development and they have to um, get everything in order and start um, that process so uh, it it will be really interesting to see that uh, like what isro does so new and uh, what it will uh, how it will compete in the global market for the satellites uh, deployment and all so that's it uh, isro is getting a new rocket very soon so let's see that next news so next news jwst and hubble jwst and hubble uh, have captured two awesome picks so by jwst we have the near perfect einstein ring and from the hubble we have two galaxies which are overlapping no they are not overlapping it seems to us that they are overlapping so so uh, from jwst um, uh, it's an einstein ring so what's an einstein ring einstein ring is nothing but when light from one one object uh, gets to us so since uh, imagine this is the object and uh, we are here so when the light comes for, from here to that like um, if there is a um, massive object in between both of us so what this will do is it will uh, distort the uh, like when the light passes uh, through the distorted space time because of this massive object here so the light bends so uh, this is why we see from this side uh, uh, the light uh, is coming from over and below the object of this thing so uh, because of the distorted uh, space um, uh, fabric so what happens is the light bends and again it comes back to us so what we see is we are seeing uh, a form of a uh, ring that is forming uh, a, to this uh, object like uh, above and below it so that is einstein ring and um, hubble it captured two galaxies um, which are like re- overlapping not really uh, one is ahead and one is behind so for us it seems that the both galaxies are like overlapping so that is one awesome pick uh, from both both of them moving on to next news so yes russia to resume space missions um, amid the ukraine tensions on 21st september three astronauts sorry one astronaut and two cosmonauts launched from russia um, uh, on on a soyuz uh, rocket to iss so why you ask one astronaut and two cosmonauts this is how they call in america astronaut and in russia cosmonauts yeah we have different names for that also <laughs> so three people launched from uh, to iss uh, the tension here is um, because of the ukraine war they have imposed many sanctions on russia so um, russia in turn they are like it's our turn so they said they will exit the uh, iss in 2024 so if you guys remember iss is a collaboration of many countries not just america or uh, esa europe so uh, russia also is a part of it and um, all these countries formed together and built that station so if they said they are going to leave exit the uh, iss it's a bad news because of this reason the thing is iss uh, is not wholly operated by one country there are sections of it and uh, each country is responsible for some of the functions so russia is responsible to maintain the altitude uh, the 250 miles or 400 km so it's their prop- propulsion system which does the job but um and the americans uh, they are responsible for the electricity and life support systems on iss so it's like you are driving in a car and you are kicking out the driver <laughs> with no and just the passenger inside so it will be that not wholly but yeah since russians are uh, responsible for that uh, 
that part of that iss so as many say uh, many researchers and scholars say that uh, russia will not do such thing because if they are going to build another um, uh, space station it will cost them a huge lot of money and uh, it will take them a uh, minimum of like a decade to do that on the other hand china is progressing very fast they already built up a, um, a space station and they are operating it at a at very uh, fast fast rate so let's see let's hope and see but uh, yeah amid the ukraine war situation three people went to iss that's the news from us and russia moving on to the next news so next news new shepard rocket malfunctions to a trip to space jeff bezos so yeah <laughs> what happened is on that day uh, it was a non crew mission uh, it was a science experiment mission so what happened is um, the rocket lifted off from the uh, from the launch pad and uh, midway the systems were like <laughs> Uh, Dhoka protocol, <laughs> aka the emergency escape system, activate got activated. So the capsule got away. It landed with parachutes, and uh, I think the uh, the booster didn't survive, and maybe it crashed. Uh, and um, so the government, uh, the American government, has asked for a report and uh, like what what really went wrong because this rocket carries people to space for a trip. since uh if you guys know jeff bezos rocket um they have started travel to space thing so um they really want to know what went wrong because next time this should not happen but um it's not a worry for i think for the company because they usually use different rocket for that space uh crewed mission and uh, different uh, rocket for the uncrewed experimental mission so I think they will know the results for that, and uh, till then, uh, New Shepard won't fly again until the investigation is completed by the FAA. Uh, that was on twelfth September. Actually, they did not have any accident till now. So the accident is um, is the first in after seven years. So uh, when the booster crashed during um, their debut mission in twenty fifteen, so. since then the rocket has flown for 21 times and uh, no no casualties or no lo- no losses or anything but uh, uh, and 6 uh, of out of 21 6 of those were human missions so crewed missions so the rocket uh, did not malfunction all these times thank god so now blue origin is uh, working to understand like what went really wrong uh, in that accident and um, yeah they will see that it's unclear how much uh, the failure of this will affect the uh, tourism like the space tourism which they started and uh, yeah so let's see uh, what happens with that uh, i will keep you updated in the next news regarding this one so moving on to the next news next news new lunar mineral found by china and uh, they also launched their multi satellite China has discovered a new lunar mi- mineral called chancite. Uh, I don't know if I spelled it rightly. So uh, this were the samples which were retrieved from Chang'e 5 mission. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, they sent a rover to moon. That rover has uh, stored samples, and that capsule was again returned to the lunar orbit. And from lunar orbit, it uh, got attached itself to um, uh, the orbiter which was waiting for it on the lunar uh, on the moon's orbit and that uh, came back to earth and uh, this sample uh, the capsule it uh, landed in mongolia and uh, this was it uh, so what is chancite chancite uh, mineral um, is 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 a mineral like it's found forming colorless transparent columnar crystals in basalt particles on the moon so it is a member of the calcium phosphate mineral changi 5 uh, the mission which retrieved this uh, mineral so it was the fifth lunar uh, exploration mission of the chinese lunar uh, exploration program so after this uh, china's national space administration uh, it received from the government uh, approval for uh, to send three more orbiters to moon as part of the 
Changi's lunar program and uh, the sample which was retrieved from the moon it was around 1731 grams and uh, they are testing on it and uh, this is where they found the new mineral uh, and overall um, this was the sixth new mineral which they found on uh, moon so many more to go maybe or maybe not <laughs> and uh, uh, so the overall significance being um, we are uh, uh, slowly getting to uh, know about our uh, satellite natural satellite moon and uh, we don't know what still what the moon is hiding to us uh, on the other side and maybe uh, let's see we, we may discover that soon with the artemis missions and um, yeah so space mining uh, this is one big tension now space mining um, if, if you guys uh, have watched expanse uh, i think it's on amazon prime uh, expanse it's a really good show it uh, it portrayed like uh, how there will be divisions uh, if there's a space colony like uh, so there will be like martians uh, belters and arthurs it's a really nice show i think it's on amazon prime yeah as i said um so go check it out and maybe i think you will know uh, like what's the uh the space mining problem and everything maybe not it's not portrayed in that much uh, in that uh, that much but there are belters who do this space mining and the other things so yeah <laughs> that's one thing and uh, this is one big tension to uh, people uh, now uh, maybe uh, the those countries who reach uh, first the moon maybe they will start uh, digging it out and who knows what all happens later i think the un will step into this and um, maybe we, we will soon see uh, space laws um, everything uh, for taking shape and this will be applied to all yeah so moving on to the next news so moving on to the next news us fcc uh, takes a vote uh, it's on 29th september and um, the issue was regarding the deorbiting of satellites which were in the low earth orbit leo the earlier rule was to to deorbit the satellite after 25 years um, they stopped their uh, usage so after their end of mission after 25 years they can the operator can deorbit them but now uh, since there are thousands thousands of satellites <laughs> in the orbit now and um, so the risk of debris and everything so the fcc of america so fcc stands for federal communications uh, commission so they voted on a uh, rule um, in september that uh, uh, any operator uh, who wishes to um, have access to the market of america and which were launched from america should have this rule that uh, after the end of mission of that uh, that satellite which is low earth uh, orbit satellites uh, it will be deorbited as soon as possible after the mission uh, or it uh, they have a maximum of 5 years to do that uh, no more than that so this is um, a good rule because uh, there are many satellites currently up there and um, space debris this thing is getting lot worse so you may think space is so big uh, why not uh, just keep them there <laughs> it's not that because uh, if there are many satellites the coordination problem will increase and what it will does is if, even if one one satellite hits another the deb- um, so these two are lost but the real problem starts now after this whatever the leftover components they are moving at a very high speed like thousands of kilometers even if a small small particle hits another satellite's key systems or its um structure that that will be very catastrophic and they will lose their satellite and again the debris of this so this is a chain reaction and it will go on so they have to keep uh, care of that and uh, earlier it was 25 years now they reduced it to 5 years so uh, another news related to this is the slingshot aerospace it's a company uh rolls out free space traffic control service so what they are doing is they have a paid version of their software for operators to operate like to know uh, their satellite position and everything and um, they will get a uh, this software uh, will reach out like give them notification that 
uh, change your um, direction or something because another satellite is on the way so the both the operators can speak to them and um, i think um, these operators can change the direction and uh, and yeah they will no no not they're not causing a hazardous crash so next news europe satellite uh, for faster extreme weather warnings so europe unveiled uh, the first of a 4 billion euro family of satellites uh, that are designed to give earlier warnings about the um, weather across the globe so uh, the satellite which is named as mtg i1 satellite uh, is a result of 12 years uh, of for the european space agency and 30 nation um, eu met sat uh, so this satellite uh, it will be launched by ariane 5 rocket uh, by the end of this year so uh, cheers to that uh, so that we will get a uh, good uh, weather predictions and uh, so this um, satellite will be placed in the geostationary orbit and uh, it is 3.8 tons like in uh, in its weight so uh, and uh, three more mtg um, i1 satellites uh, which will be imaging satellites uh, will join it soon and uh, two mtg s yes, sounding satellites um, will join um, them so what they will do is uh, they will literally slice through the atmosphere like a medical scanner <laughs> this is how it was reported and uh, so it, it is this data will be an accurate or like a uh, much good prediction of the weather 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 across the globe so they should be operational by the year 2030 <laughs> next news axiom space to fly saw the astronauts so axiom space is a company um, who like uh, they it's a private company for space tourism and other things so they launched their first mission uh, about the spacex ca- crew dragon capsule in 2022 so these astronauts went to iss uh, so now they have signed an agreement with the saudi arabia so it's like the human flight service provider uh, uh, like they are the human space flight service provider they came in agreement with the saudi space commission ssc uh, to um, so so that they train uh, the saudi astronauts and uh, for a future flight opportunity uh, no earlier than 2023 so they will uh, train the uh, saudi astronauts for 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 uh, being in space and conducting uh, research experiments so that's it and uh, so also uh, this partnership will uh, fly two uh, saudi astronauts to space uh, including the first female saudi astronaut um, so previously they launched the kingdom's first uh, kingdom is saudi arabia so they launched their first astronaut program undertaking uh, uh, the long and short term space flights so the saudi astronaut program is an integral part of the kingdom's vision 2030 uh, they are planning to launch its national space strategy uh, in next few months featuring space programs and other initiatives um, that they will be doing the the astronauts will be trained by axiom uh, axiom i don't know how to spell it. axiom <laughs> so axiom uh, and um, rigorous training uh, they, they will go under they will undergo rigorous training i think you can hear a child crying in the back side sorry about that yeah so uh, rigorous training curriculum and every other thing uh, it will be trained by the axiom so that's it from axiom space and their uh, saudi uh, deal and uh, so yeah moving on to the next news the next news and the very famous one dart mission double asteroid redirection test so the dart has collided with the dimorphos asteroid it is moon of the didymos asteroid so dimorphos is orbiting didymos asteroid so this both asteroid do not pose any threat to earth but uh, for the sake of experiment we uh, the, the nasa chose that asteroids to has the target and uh, on 26 september the dart collided um, intentionally intentionally collided with the dimorphos and uh, the results are awaited like uh, uh, for the first time nasa uh, nasa's jwst and hubble both captured this moment and um, i think you can see on the screen uh, both of their ca- uh, cameras um, like recording of what happened there so uh, that is one nice thing and uh, the results um, so nasa hopes to uh, reduce the orbital time so th- this is what it is like um, 
in future we have to save art from any possible threats of asteroids uh, directing towards us so maybe by this uh, this method is known as kinetic kinetic impact test so the results are awaited um so uh, now the uh, dart has uh, collided with the dimorphos uh, so they hope to reduce the orbital time um, around the dimorphos by around uh, reduction of minus 10 minutes so i think uh, uh, that's the time frame uh, maybe uh, and uh, and yeah uh, this results will be known to us by um in 2 3 weeks maybe uh, the ground satellite stations will watch the dimorphos and uh, know uh, what's the changes in its orbital time so that's one interesting news uh, and i think i will um, i will make another video about the dart mission uh, in detail and uh, with other um, informations so let's see moving on to the next one the final uh, news of this video the capstone Capstone uh, stands for Cis Lunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment. So, what is it? Um, in simple, we for Earth we have International Space Station which is orbiting us around 400 kilometer above the Earth surface. So, for uh, Artemis mission, there will be uh, so there will be a gateway, lunar gateway, which will be orbiting the uh, Moon. so this will be the gateway for us to visit to moon and beyond so for this gateway to be in the lunar orbit they they sent capstone it's a um it's a sa small satellite um, which will go and scout the uh, path for the gateway which will be launched later in 2024 or i don't know if maybe the next year the gateway will be launched uh, in in coming years and it will be assembled so so yeah so what is this capstone mission capstone mission is nothing but uh, it is trying a new lunar uh, orbit uh, um, so this orbit has special properties like it's in between the earth's gravitation and the moon gravitation so less energy to spend to be in orbit uh capstone was launched in uh 28 june 2022 abo about the rockets um rocket labs or um, electron rocket and um, and um, it, it, so the uh, it has various mission objectives to complete so uh, so one of them being the to verify this is lunar new rectilinear orbit halo orbit uh, for the future spacecraft and so this orbit uh, brings the capstone like uh, within 1000 miles of uh, one lunar pole and uh, on its near pass and uh, and 43500 miles from the other pole at its uh, peak every 7 days so uh, it require it requires uh, less propulsion and um, so this will uh, so uh, other than the circular orbit orbit this will uh, consume less energy of the spacecraft to be in that orbit and also um, this orbit uh, will be placed in such a way that uh, it will be uh, the, uh, for that gateway or any other satellite in this orbit it will be uh, directly communicating with uh, the earth 24 by 7 so it will not low it's not like uh, um, the satellite went to the far side of the moon and uh, we have to wait for uh, some some time to get the signal back so so as seen from the screen um, the the gateway or the satellite will be rotating on this path and uh, uh, it will have a direct communication with earth every time so this uh, and also uh, this will uh, be the basis for other satellites for navigation guidance so um, uh, this is a very int uh, interesting and important mission uh, before the artemis uh, uh, starts uh, now due to the weather conditions uh, there is a Uh, I don't know hurricane or typhoon uh, in America, and for that reason, they moved the Artemis uh, one uh, SLS rocket back to the bay. So uh, we have to further await for await for the uh, launch status and uh, the date and timings of that. So yeah, that's it from the space news. Thank you for watching the space news, and uh, I hope um, I will be doing this a lot more in future. Um, and uh, thank you for having that patience and waiting till till the end so see you in the next video till then take care of yourself and be safe and don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel thank you and have a nice day